conditioning during COVID-19. Uh, things are really uncertain, difficult, and for the young cricketers, we try and address that issue. As panelists, we've got Ms. Niharika Srivastav. She is a counseling psychologist and will also be joined by Chris Hall and Shannon Young. They are level three coaches uh, with Australia and mentors of CAP online coaching. For India, as, as it is in Australia as well. Um, so we're looking at using tools and things that um, are pretty much everyday items, which also helps us, as Mam says, to control the controllables. It's really hard and it's really easy to say, oh, I haven't got a bat or I haven't got, you know, someone to bowl at me off 22 yards, but we can control the controllables. So in terms of the rice. So we got rice isn't cooked, by the way. It's all, it's not cooked. But for, let's look at a, a little drill for a leg spinner. That's right. We were a spinner. Okay, so we know that we know the, the, the movement of the wrist for a leg spinner. To strengthen that and replicate it, we can jump into the rice and then reenact that movement, replicate it. So I mean, I've got my grip, I'm in, and I'm twisting. Okay, and set to six. We're doing set to six, purely and simply, because that's how many balls we bowl. Then if we want the off spinner to practice, we've got his grip, okay, in he goes, and we're twisting, and we're making the movements of that, our fingers and the wrist, to improve our grip and to get some, get some deliveries. So the rice, for the guys at home, the rice provides resistance. Okay, so not only is it actually trying to create muscle memory, like we spoke about, can we get our bodies to feel good and do the right thing? But when we create resistance, it makes us work harder. So then when we get the ball in our hand, we've actually worked against the resistant force. So then we're actually more likely to impart our spin on the ball. So, and our seam bowlers, our seam bowlers, bowlers can do exactly the same. Okay, so pulling their fingers down the back of the ball, scrub it again, and so we're in, and then they're just replicating what their hand is going to do when they've got a ball back in their hand when we can get out balls. So all types of spinners can get in there. We can also use that to tighten our grip um, as a batsman, getting our hand in there, grabbing the sand, and away we go. Um, then next for bowlers, we would um, we, we love to work with uh, with heavy balls here. Um, so Shannon's then got Shannon's over here. We've got um, a sock. Um, so it's a just sock. a sock again filled with rice. So what I can actually do, the rice allows me in the sock where a cricket ball won't let me actually play around with my grip. Okay, so I can actually be really wide in my fingers for an off spinner, and I can just turn that with the rice. Leg spinner, I can also use it as a quick bowler in terms of wrist release. And we can the, use, we can also use, we can also use the sock full of sand for our batting drills, which yeah. we'll get into a little bit later. So again, if, you, if you're inside and mum and dad are saying you don't damage the house, so it's really important that we can actually provide um, a, a softer option. In terms of when we get to, uh, the bowling and doing different things, obviously um, weighted balls. So heavier balls that are pretty much available. Um, pieces of fruit also work. You can get a heavier piece of fruit. And again, from a spin perspective, I want to work them around. Work them around at different weights. Once I get a cricket ball back in my hands, then I'm more prepared once I go out or I can bowl in the backyard or once we get back to training that I can work on that. So then to, we'll go, go to action, I think. Sure. Yep. Okay, so we'll go, uh, we'll, we'll, start with, um, we'll start with spinners. We'll just turn this around here. We'll get our camera down this way. Cool. Okay, so for spinners, okay, we've got a little, we, use, we might use little hurdles in here. We use these ones. Okay, so we use these little hurdles. Yep. And then we've got little, like, a little um, step stool. Okay, so for our spinners, we we'll use the step stool. Is that for what you guys are going to be using? Okay. So we'll start getting into our stance. All right, and we're working on driving our back knee. Okay, so because when we drive our back knee up, okay, our body moves in a straight line. And we also get, um, we also get up and over the ball and 
and we get lots of overspin loss of side spin. So we'd be going to a set of six, we'd be in this position, and then we're pushing off that back heel, and we'll be coming through. Okay? Once we've done a couple of sets of those, we then go to back foot. Okay? And we're in here, step, and through. So my back knee is driving up in a straight line. So the hurdle here, okay, I'm going up and over the hurdle, and I'm through. And I'm going in a nice straight line. And we can then come back a couple of steps, okay? And we'll be walking in and then getting through, getting our action. So we're just training. That's a drill to, to get our back, back knee going. So when your coach says you want to get your back knee driving through rather than out, okay? Some bowlers keep it nice and keep it low, okay? So we're not using our hips. I'll just do um, a hurdle is a super drill. And then we'll go on to the seamers. We'll go against that. Yeah, Sam. Okay? So a lot of bowlers have their arms and legs everywhere as they're running in. So we've got a nice big net here. But you can use a wall or a fence or a, a gate test if you want. Um, so we've got bowlers who might be running in with their arms going across them or when they take off, when they're at the, 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 the bound. Arms are going out, we use a net, okay? So that our arms stay nice and close. All right, we're in our back foot landing, we're through, and we're going in a nice straight line. Cool. Okay, so we've got my ball, all right? So this is for a bowler who might be, as he's jumping, hands going out here, got a ball next to the net, next to the wall at home, okay? And then as I take off, everything's staying in nice and close my action becomes nice and compact and I start moving in straight lines and I'm nice and balanced. So we've got a couple of drills for spinners, a couple for the seamers, and now we'll, uh, we'll get some batting ones going for it. Yeah, so we can um, we do all sorts of things with batting. Most of us think that um, from a batting perspective, I need someone to throw a ball at me and I need to be able to hit that ball. Um, while we're, uh, we're at home, and we, we haven't got our access to our training facilities, um, even with just a ball and a bat, I have the potential to work without someone throwing the ball to me. Um, obviously, if this was a ball and this was a net, um, it's a net here, but from a wall perspective, I can bounce the ball up against the wall, I can move. An interesting one without having any access to someone to throw me balls, I can actually make sure that my position is going the right, right way. And when I drop this tennis ball, put it under my chin, and this is going to ensure that my head stays over the ball and goes into the right position. I'm going to hold with that. I can do a different variation. I can do a thing for spinners. So the other thing we can, we can ask that we want to work on our footwork to spinners. So I'm going to hit this ball on the second bounce. I can come up with many, many different variations so we don't actually need anyone else to to be throwing balls to me. Um, what we tend to encourage most of our guys here, and we're going to ask you guys to do as well, is really vary your drills. So there, there should be days where you might do stuff by yourself. There might be another day where you, you luckily you've got a brother or a sister or a mum or dad that can throw you some balls. So you're going to hit some balls with them. Um, when we go back to position and how we want to work it, um, so batting position has become really important. A lot of people, uh, a lot of people uh, used to believe the traditional way was a lot of moving feet. And what we've now learned, the best players in the world, you know, Rohit Sharma's, Virat Kohli's, Stephen Smith's, Labuschagne starting to come through. Um, they're very balanced when they hit the ball. It's less about being on the move and trying to get their feet to the ball. It's more about their head. So we use a lot of balance tools um, here at the centre. We tend to use um, lots of foam. Uh, if you're at home, what you can use is a really simple cushion. So if I was to set up, what I'm going to do, if you've, uh, if you've got a mum like mine, you'd probably have to take your shoes off and use it. But this is lucky, this is a cushion from my house, so I'm having to stand on it. Um, so what we're actually looking to do is leave my back foot with weight on it and transfer weight through my front foot. So again, if I was to drop a tennis ball and hit that ball, what I'm doing is leaving my weight through the back leg. You see a lot of this when we're coaching. 
and people actually missing and losing their balance through shots. So um, if Shannon hit, if, if we watch from the side here, watch Shannon's back heel. So there's actually weight being pushed back through my back leg. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer my weight through my front, stay nice and still. You can see there my head becomes really still. I hit the ball under my eyes. Um, so that's in terms of back foot when we want to talk about movement. Um, yeah, we'll do that in a second. So in terms of movement, um, I've also got the stool. Um, these are a pretty simple crew there. They can be wooden stools. You can use them. Um, sometimes you'll see them in the kitchen, people to reach up and, and reach things. Um, anything, little block of wood. Um, we tend to use these, again, from a balance perspective. I want to play on the back foot to seam it, and I start with my back foot up here. If someone was to throw me a ball, I'm going to stand up, and I'm going to actually play totally on the back foot. So when we actually get back on the ground, it's going to replicate that I've moved back into position and pushed all my weight back. The other way we can do it is I can actually stand and play shots. What we're looking to do is not lose our balance. Okay? So again, if we get rid of the stool and I'm back playing on the back foot, you can see I've got a really good center of gravity. My head is still, my eyes are level because I've pushed all my weight back. Um, the last thing that I would encourage everyone to do, let me just grab those stumps. Come down, sand, maybe. So you can see here we've got a piece of carpet. We're really lucky that obviously we've got a lot of artificial turf, synthetic turf, but any bits of carpet or rug, you want it to be pretty much the width of the stumps, give or take about six inches. Okay? Um, and what this becomes is what we affectionately have called a batting box. So from this batting box, if I move my head first, I can access everything on the front foot. As soon as I go out there, you can see my weight is now going across and I'm closed off. If that ball was to come back, I'm in real trouble. What we always want is our head to go towards the line of the ball. Now, if I want to play on the back foot again, my head's really still, I can access every shot I want, and all I've really done is moving my head and subsequently my weight into this batting box. Gives me a really good indication if the ball's been thrown by a friend or a parent, and I come out over here, I've got instant recognition that, oh, okay, my weight's gone this way and it's taken my foot that way. So if Sam throws me another one and I come down through there, suddenly I look down, here's my feedback, here's my recognition that I'm inside the batting box. So that's a Another really easy, um, you can use that in terms of that bit of carpet. We're about 1.5 meters long. You can use that in front of the wall by yourself. We turn that sideways. I'm just going to turn my back to the camera for a sec. So, but again, could be under my chin. I'm looking to hit, stay safe. All right, what I don't want to do. Just have my head go over there and then I come out of my batting box. All right, so that's a really simple way. If you did that in 10 minutes, um, you would find that your movement and your body and movement patterns, we spoke before about if something feels good, it is good. It's a really simple way to give yourself some feedback. What happens in the beauty of this dance beam app and uh, what we do remote coaching was, is we don't always feel what our body's doing. So. We will think, oh yeah, I'm doing everything right um, with the, the beauty of video and things like this, where we use tools for instant feedback, which give us a visual cue to what we may have been doing. So um, that's, uh, there will be many, many more batting things, but they're just a couple of little things that you can do in the house or on your backyard or your patio. Um, you don't need much room. You can go through um, your little drills, could be a half an hour a day thing that then you hit balls live with your friends or hopefully when you get back to the academy and stuff, you can go and face your bowlers. But this is not just isolation stuff. Um, we encourage our players to be doing this. Uh, they'll do that through the season. We've got some um, 
some guys who play, as I said before, first class cricket, um, which is your Ranger Trophy, our, uh, our Sheffield Shield, um, who play at our club, they're young teenage guys. Um, they will do some of this stuff all through the season. Yeah, there's been um, one, of, one of our players, when they stay at the hotels and they're playing in the game, and he ducks down to the car park nearly every morning and will just hit the wall against the wall. Um, it's it's well, the way he's got used to preparing. So um, there's the opportunity to do that. A um, couple of other little things. Just um, we should make it fun. All right, Cricket should always be as fun as possible. So um, what we've got here is that's just a tape tennis ball. So I know you guys play. I've been lucky enough that I've um, I've been to India several times and I've seen tennis ball cricket. Um, normally just play with a hard tennis ball. I know I've seen tape cricket balls, um, which tend to be normally just down the seam. But if you tape it like that in half, what you'll find is this will now swing. Okay? So if you're playing with your friends in the backyard or you got your dad to throw you some balls and you want to work a little bit harder on your batting, you want to put yourself into a challenging situation where the ball swings. So in terms of that becomes our shiny side. It's also a really good skill to really understand. It goes the other way, actually. Reverse swings. Uh, <laughs> how, to, reverse. Um, how to release a certain ball a certain way. All right? And swing bowling is all about wrist position. So even though that, that is weighted to one side, Actually, putting it in the right position and understanding how to control it's a skill in its own right. We might be able to, I might throw this to Sam, try and get it towards the camera to swing. Can you read Sam? Let's see if we can get one to hoop. Go, go in. Go in the right hander. So throw it in straight, get underarm, and overarm. We just. We'll get Sam the ball up. A little bit of an answer. Oh, short. And away we go. So that's just a little trick that it's a very popular thing in Australia. Most kids, most kids in their backyards, we we're pretty lucky here that we have backyards that we at least used to that were, were big enough we could play games of cricket. Um, and most children in Australia, if you said to them, take tennis ball, they would know exactly what you were, you were talking about. Um, and, and, you know, in many ways, most of us, um, play like that. I know you wet the tennis ball on, on occasions in India. Um, so be be creative. Be free. Use some freedom in what you want to use. Um, there is no right or wrong way uh, in terms of finding something that's going to make you better. There are, you know, obviously we need some, some uh, knowledge and you need to understand the why factor of why you're doing something. All this stuff that we showed you, there's a why factor to it. Um, so you want to be careful of people who just put drills up and you go, oh, that looks like a pretty good drill, and you do it, and you don't understand what benefit it is to your cricket. So all these things that we've done, it might look like, oh, yeah, they've just found stuff, but there's also a benefit, and most of it's in relation to how our body operates and how our body... Now proceed to the review part. Cool. Go to the app. Cool. Okay. All right, so... How can we, how do we um, use the Stan Speam app? Okay, so can that, can we, can everybody see that okay? Yeah, it's perfect. Yep, it looks good? Okay, great. Okay, so on the app here, we've got um, uh, smart video, we'll show that in a second. We've got some live stats and we've got video recording. So I might show you straight just how easy it is to record some video um, to put into Stan's beam, um, let's put um, so let's let's put some batting in. Let's you get if you stand just quickly talk about. Do you do you guys have? You, I presume you have Google Play in the App Store or Oppo. So yeah, uh, for most of the kids, I assume they would be having Google Play App Store. Yeah, Excellent. So, play, so, play. so first thing is you, you've got to get the Stan's beam app. And subscribe to the Stance Beam, which will give you the ability to upload videos. Yep. So, um, so we're we're live here now, and so all I have to do is going to record five seconds of footage for me, and away we go, and then that video will be saved. And I go back into here, type in what my session is, 
call it test today. The cap, um, the bowling type, we'll just say it was an underarm feed. Done. We saved the session. Okay. And then your coach will be able to see that right away. Okay. So that's now uploaded into the cloud. Um, and your stance beam coach, your cap coach, or your stance beam coach, they'll be able to go in there and review that for you straight away. They'll be able to see it. And um, how they then review, we'll go back in here. Let's have a look at some we've already done. We've got lots of players in here. So this is, uh, this is young Crash over there in India. So we've been working with him for a little while. So when we, get to, when we as the coach get to see your footage, um, this will come in here and we can see all the shots he's been playing. It'll take a second. He's hitting lots of balls, young Crash. So it might take a little bit of time to load up for us. So the important, the important thing, and we'll discuss it a little bit later after we demo, is we will show you the best angles to take the videos from. Um, it, because if you can set up the camera in the right position, then it's, it's easier for your coach to actually analyze what they're seeing. Um, we, we, we've been fortunate enough, as Chris said, to work with, with lots of players. So we've seen lots of different video and work out what's best. So this is uh, this is young Crash who, we, who we've been working with, and this is him batting in uh, in his basement. Okay, quite fortunate. He's got a synthetic pitch, um, and he's got his dad here with the, with the uh, with the robo arm. Um, so we can then look at his footage. We can slow it down, analyze it, and what we noticed with 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 Crash and the feedback we gave him um, was that his trigger movement wasn't really in sync um, with the release of the ball. So we gave, him, um, we gave him a review, okay? We rate the stance, trigger, footwork, balance, head position, and, and we just gave him a little bit of feedback there uh, that his trigger was very late and his eyes at release weren't still. Then we just wanted some, uh, some slightly different footage. So then we get, Crash puts that into place, practice it. We send some drills through the app, a couple of little videos. Um, then we get a message back telling us he's made 30. And then we give him another drill to practice. Um, so we gave him another little review. Okay. We give him a drop drill. Um, and he's uh, he, using the striker, we can see that his consistency of his back lift and his back swing is much improved. Um, he goes back and works on his game. Let's have a look here. So he's hitting a lot of balls. What was this, two weeks later? Week so this later. was, this was a later. week later, I think. Yep, correct, Shannon. Yep. So then we get to see Crash over there in India, and we're back here in Melbourne, um, and we can see him putting the drills into place. Okay. And then we get a message yesterday. So he's done seven, ten days of drills. We get a message yesterday that he's made 103 of 103 balls, which is fantastic for him. He's putting the time and effort in. His goal, we gave him a goal, which was to, to, to change his trigger. We gave him drills. Um, um, so then using the data from Stan Speed, because he's got the striker, uh, the sensor, we can compare the session from July 8th to his session to July 20, where is it here? So what Chris is going through now is we had the vision, which is great for any coach to be able to have the vision. But then we could actually draw on data as well. We could see what was happening with Chris in terms of the bat speed he generated and how, because his trigger was late, all his weight was going across the wicket instead of coming down towards the ball, which was limiting his ability to actually create bat speed and momentum through the ball. Um, and then... Obviously, I'll let Chris take you through this, but this is his before and after. So, so his power rating was 176 before, and it's up to 308. Okay, so that's a number based on um, your bat speed, your, tight, your speed at impact, and your efficiency. His efficiency, so his timing, basically. Shot efficiency is about timing, so it's about maintaining the speed of your bat as you're hitting the ball. He was at 76%. He went up to 92%. Okay. His speed at impact went from 25 Ks 
to 36 with a smaller gap here, which means he's more efficient with his timing, okay? The faster his bat swings, the more time he's got to make a decision on what shot to play. So he doesn't have to commit to a shot sooner than he needs to. Um, and therefore, he's more likely to make the correct, session, uh, the correct decision. And there are some more, more stats there, but we didn't need to focus on, um, focus on all of those. But again, there's more data there when we use the striker um, so that we can, uh, we can monitor players um, from near and, and remotely um, and see consistency coming into their game um, with the drills that, that we work on. So that's, um, that's a little look um, at the app and the sensor. It's something, it's, it's, a, it's a 10 gram sensor, it's nice and light, just goes on the end of your bat. Can, can we see that there? Yep, cool. Um, just charges up, fits on there and sends info back to the app. Um, and, and the video and the data combined uh, mean that we can get a really full picture of our player um, and the improvements that he's making and the consistency that, uh, that we're getting from him. So, yeah. Very, very clever tool. Uh, we've been using it here for about oh, 18 months now, I think. Um, and um, we, we learn more about our players every day with it. Um, and in particular, uh, the reach we can now, we, you can all, um, we, can, we can provide um, from anywhere in the world to players and for CAP, to you guys in isolation, your coaches can still make contact with you. Um, uh, no matter where you are and, and however long we're all, uh, we're all in, our in our homes. I think the, the last thing is probably just giving you guys an example of the camera angle, the best camera angles to use stance beam. Um, not slow, this is cool. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. So, can you, yeah, you hold that and get me in shot. Right? So, when, you, when you're using, when you're sending video, um, when you're putting video into stand speed for your coach uh, to look at, it's probably, it's a lot easier if you just get yourself going and then we sort of probably do 12 balls, a couple of overs. Um, do you want to get his throat? Yeah, how are you, you, on, how are you on the road? Yeah. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah, okay. So, what we want to be able to see, when it's a drill, so like the drop drills that we showed with Young Crest, and uh, then we want the camera to be as close to the batter without it getting broken from the front, and we can do from the side, okay? So what I want to do here from using sort of a, if there's a bowl of bowling, I'm playing the shot here. Yeah, you could. Yeah, so we want to be able to see, we want to be able to see the release point, so we can see the trigger that the batsman's got and his movement prior to the release. Because we want to make sure that our batsman's, um, the young boy or young girl batty, their eyes are still when the ball is released from the thrower, the bowler, or from the robo arm or side arm. Okay, so that's uh, that's the view we want uh, for batting. Okay, and we've got the whole the whole picture. Um, your coach might say he wants to see some side and footage, in which case. Oh, again, you're on the. We get him on the on the go on the green. <laughs> so this angle we can start to look at. Okay, we can see the height of back swing. Okay, we can see when whether the foot's moving first or whether the head's moving first, um, and that again will give us depending on depending on what the coach wants you to work on or what they're wanting to see. That camera angle will give them another set of uh, another set of visuals, another set of information. Uh, for bowlers, um, we can use um, front-on footage, okay, when we're doing drill work, okay, but we also, we can use it from the back of the run-up so we can see all of the run-up, so we've not all got much space at the moment, okay, but if we're just going off two steps, we want to make sure that we can see the release, okay, and we can see our feet. Um, and then we can do the same with spinners, like the drill we saw before. Side on very, very um, good information for us. We we'll look through um, the action from the side. So we really don't, when, when, we, when you put video in, in stand speed, we probably just want it to be six to 12 balls um, at a time, because then we can review that specific area. Um, if it's 100 balls, there might be two or three different things we want to work on, but it's a little bit, uh, a little bit easier to get info if it's just about one topic. Ideally, yeah. ideally skill set. So if, if it is that six to 12 balls, what we don't want is you're playing a foot, front foot shot, a back foot, coming down to spin. If you want to actually link it to skill set and say, hey, this is a six ball session, 
of me playing front foot drives or back foot, you know, defence or playing against spin. That's the best way to do it. That, that is the easiest way for a coach to actually really get a true understanding yep. of your movements. So, so in the app here, when you save your session, you can tag it with throwing arm. Um, you can tag it with which drill it was, um, whether it was a bowler, video and stats session there. So we can actually tag that um, so that your coach can get the information nice and easily and they know um, which part of the game you're working on. Is that, um, have we uh, got plenty of info there about how we're using stance for you? Epitomizing what you just mentioned that we are not alone. Uh, we could get you in from Australia to impart insights to the kids at CAP, so certainly not alone. Uh, some very pertinent points touched in this discussion, uh, some of them being how to remain motivated. There's a lot of anxiety, there's a lot of stress that's around, but uh, you're not alone again. And also Niharika touched upon the need to not focus so much on cricket that you forget other parts of your life. And also the fact that even in current scenario, there are ways in which you can practice at home. There are ways in which you can keep yourself updated with what's happening around and also uh, keep yourself in the best shape, maintain a routine, maintain a diary. That is all that we have for this webinar. We'll be back again with more webinars. Before I conclude, I'd like to express my gratitude to all of you uh, for coming up with such great insights. Thank you, Niharika. Thank you, Chris and Shannon. Uh, that's all for now. Goodbye. Take care. Stay safe.